hi and welcome back to the channel. Today, well today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to try to answer a question that I've received quite honestly since I started making YouTube videos and it's uh, also a question that I had myself when I first became a beekeeper. That question is how do I recognize when I'm in dearth? What is dearth and how do I know when I've gotten there and more importantly how do I know when I've gotten out? Before I go any further I would like to take this opportunity to thank a couple of channels that have recently featured Bug Farmer Honey in one of their episodes. Now if you follow my Instagram uh, page at all you know that uh, the Bug Farmer likes to sip a nice bourbon from time to time and, uh, and with that I follow a couple of uh, bourbon channels on YouTube and I had recently sent them some of my honey and they were kind enough to feature my honey on their channel and I wanted to give a quick shout out to David and Jamie of the Whiskey Row and of Beyond the Row. So if you like to have a nice pour after you're done in your beehives, stop by the uh, Whiskey Row or Beyond the Row and give them a uh, give them a look. You might just like their channels, and if you do, subscribe and let them know that uh, that Bug Farmer sent you. All right. So what is dearth? Dearth is a word that that I really didn't know what it meant when I first started beekeeping. I I, I heard uh, Jim over at Vino Farm say it. I, I heard uh, Frederick Dunn talk about it, and a host of other YouTube beekeepers. I really didn't know what it was, and I actually found out from listening to one of Frederick Dunn's videos because we all know Frederick Dunn. He knows everything about bees, so if you are learning bees and you need a resource, jump over to listen to uh, Frederick Dunn. You'll learn a lot. So what is dearth? Dearth? Dearth is when all of the resources dry up and your bees can no longer find nectar and or pollen and even sometimes propolis to bring back to the, uh, to the colony. Uh, basically, the uh, the cupboards are bare in nature, so to speak, and the bees are forced to live with whatever they've already got in the hive. Now, this is a dangerous time for bees, and if you don't uh, have enough honey stored on the hive, basically if you've harvested and taken it all, the bees can be in, in serious trouble if you don't feed them and, and provide them with everything they need in order to sustain the colony until the, uh, the, until the flow picks up again. Well, I remember as a new beekeeper, the hardest thing for me to get my mind around was when is dearth happening in my area? Now, it happens for all of us at different times, depending on your location, depending on where you are. But for me, I, I didn't know when dearth started. I remember watching Jim at Vino Farms and, and Frederick Dunn, and, and both of those guys are northeast beekeepers, and their dearth was happening at a different time than, than mine. So I remember going out to the field next to uh, next to my house to see what flowers were were left standing. I remember paying close attention to to the the flowers that I would see on the sides of the road when I was uh, when I was driving to and from work, to try to get an idea of when the resources were available for my bees. One of the easiest ways that I've determined that you can find out whether or not you're in dearth is to pour a little bit of sugar syrup out in a saucer and set it on your back patio. If you're in dearth, it won't be very long before you have a, uh, a bunch of bees on that sugar syrup and it won't be long before they've cleaned that plate. Well, that's what I'm doing here. I've got a saucer with some sugar syrup. Now you can't really see the sugar syrup, so I'm going to put a little bit of green food coloring in there. We'll be able to find out exactly uh, how much sugar syrup we have on the plate and exactly how long it takes or the bees wipe it out. All right, now this process took probably about 30 to 35 minutes before the bees found it, pulled their sisters back in the hive, and actually cleaned the plate. But they did find it, tell their sisters in the hive, and they did clean the plate, which tells me that I am still in dearth. All right, and here we have a, it looks like a carpenter bee that wanted to get in on the action, get into this nectar here, and boy, did it ever get into the nectar. I want to let you know that I did pick this carpenter bee out and let it let it go free. And chances are right now it is, it is boring a brand new hole in the bottom side of my deck. There you go, these bees are on the nectar, and they are going to clean this plate. All right, well, it's been about 30 minutes, and the bees, uh, they have cleaned off the saucer filled with sugar water, so I know that, uh, that we are definitely still in dearth. Now, something that I've noticed that uh, the bees do after I'm done open feeding 
is uh, they will land someplace close and they will start gyrating their stomachs around. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know whether they're trying to move the honey around before they take flight and go back to the colony or whether they're just cleaning each other off. But it's just something interesting that I've noticed and it's always always fun to look at. Always have to be careful not to step on a bee when this happens. But, uh, but there you go. They're ready to take the resources back to the colony. So this year I decided I was not going to go through the winter with a medium super on top of my hive. These bee barns are quite large enough, so what I want to do is I want to force resources down into the bee barns and go through winter with just the, the bee barn and the control box. Um, if you're not familiar with my hives, I have a, a heating and cooling unit on my hives and I have a control box that sits on top that determines whether or not to heat or cool anyways. I want to go through winter with only the bee barn and the control box on top. So what I have done is I have removed my medium supers, my honey supers from all of the hives and I am now feeding my bees sugar syrup so that they can start packing some resources down into the bee barn and prepare them for winter. There is plenty of room inside these bee barns for them to have both resources and brood. So I think the girls will be fine. You might notice that my bucket feeder is sitting on a uh, basically a screened shim. That is so that I can have airflow from the bottom of the box up to the top controller, which actually has two thermostats in it, so that I can uh, record the temperatures inside the hive. All right, so I've just about finished gathering up all the buckets. Now it's time to get all nine of these buckets up to the kitchen where I can make some, uh, some sugar syrup. It's time to feed the girls. I store my sugar in the office on a beehive stand with oil traps on it so that the ants can't get into my office and get all that sugar. Make some sugar syrup. Now I'm not going to bore you with the process. We've uh, we've all seen it done a million times before, so I'm just going to rush through this really quick. But just know that I filled nine buckets of sugar syrup, all one to one, and in order for me to do this, it took 50 pounds of sugar. So that is a lot of sugar just to fill up nine gallons uh, of feed for the bees. This whole process took me about an hour to complete. Some people choose to boil water, add the sugar to the boiling water to create your simple syrup, and then allow it to cool before giving it back to the bees. In my opinion, the blender works much better for me because I have a quicker turnaround time from the time that I took the bucket off the hives until the time that I get the buckets back onto the hives. So, all I have left to do is give the girls their, uh, their sugar syrup. Now, this is the second bucket of sugar syrup that I've given the hives this season, and that should get them through until the fall flow. Now, I don't know whether the fall flow is going to be substantial or not in my area. Sometimes we don't even have it, but hopefully this will be enough to get them through. If we don't have a fall flow, I will make them another gallon of sugar syrup apiece, and that should be more than enough uh, food and resources down in the bee barns to get them through the winter. So there you go, the end of another video. Now I hope that this video helped to answer your question. Now again, this was geared towards the new beekeepers, but I hope it helped you answer the question, uh, what is dearth and when can I expect it? Well, it's going to be different for each one of us, but I guarantee you that if you put a saucer of sugar water out on your back patio, if you're in dearth, those bees are going to come. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you have something to say, by all means, please comment. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, take a moment, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to be notified of my new content. I try to drop a video every Friday. We try to keep it light and have fun. So with all that said, be happy. 
I will see you next week. Take care.